It's fall and that means it's time for one of my favorite fabrics, corduroy. And by the way, if you didn't know this, National Corduroy Day is coming up. That's 11-11, the day that most resembles corduroy. So in this video, Haley's gonna show you everything you need to know about sewing corduroy. She'll teach you corduroy terminology, how to pick a pattern, how to sew with it, and how to care for it. All right, I'll hand it over to Haley. So what is corduroy? Corduroy is a napped fabric. That is just fancy fabric speak for something that has a velvet-like finish. What makes corduroy unique from other napped fabric is it has a ribbed-like texture. These ribs are called whales and they come in a bunch of different widths and they are measured in number of whales per inch. You can loosely group them into three categories. Pin whale or needle cord has 16 to 23 whales per inch. Mid whale has 10 to 14 whales per inch and wide whale has three to eight whales per inch. But underneath all of these whales, corduroy is typically constructed using a plain weave or a twill weave which actually makes it quite sturdy. Most corduroys are going to be 100% cotton, but you can also find them blended with synthetics like polyester or even lycra or spandex to give them a little bit of stretch. Let's talk about the kinds of garments you can make from corduroy. The types of garments you can make from corduroy will really depend on the whale count as pin whale tends to be a lot lighter weight than wide whale corduroy. For pinwheel corduroy, you can make shirts, dresses, skirts, and pants. It tends to be a little bit lighter weight, so keep that in mind as you are choosing your project. Midwheel corduroy works great for jackets, pants, and skirts. It has a more moderate body and tends to be a little bit more heavyweight, so really any project that calls for a bottom weight is gonna be well suited for a midwheel corduroy. And lastly, we have wide whale corduroy. This tends to be the heaviest weight of corduroy, so it's really best suited for outerwear projects like jackets and coats. Let's talk about how to pre-wash and care for your corduroy. Corduroy tends to be a pretty low maintenance fabric and in most cases, you're gonna be able to wash it at home. When you are pre-washing your corduroy, the number one thing you wanna avoid is overloading your washing machine. So you'll wanna put that into your washing machine by itself or if it's a smaller cut, you can put it in with a towel just to help fluff it up. You can use a gentle detergent and use cold or warm water. When it comes to drying your corduroy, you'll wanna start by tumbling dry for five to 10 minutes. This is gonna help release any wrinkles that are left in from the washing process. Then you'll wanna lay it out flat to dry completely. When it comes to caring for your finished corduroy garment, you can use this same process. Just turn that garment inside out to help protect the nap of your corduroy. Next, let's talk about how to sew your corduroy. Corduroy requires a directional cutting layout. This is because those whales have nap and the nap is going to look different when it's running down than when it's running up. To check the direction of the nap, just simply run your hand up and down the fabric when you are running your hand with the grain of the nap, it'll feel nice and smooth. When you are running against the nap, it'll feel a little bit rougher. When you're deciding what direction to cut the nap, you'll want to keep in mind that garments tend to wear better with the nap facing down. However, the fabric has a deeper, richer color with the nap running up. So it's a little bit of a trade-off and you get to make the design decision of what you like for your garment. Let's talk about pressing corduroy. Like other napped fabrics, you're gonna to wanna to take extra special care when you're pressing corduroy. In fact, you might want to avoid pressing whenever possible, which might feel a little counterintuitive. Instead, you'll wanna rely on finger pressing, which is just using the weight and friction of your finger to get those seams to lie nice and flat. In cases where you do need to press, utilize the very tip of your iron to get really close to the seam. If you do need to use the entire weight of your iron, you have two options. Option one is to place your corduroy face down on a towel. This will help to protect the nap. Option two is using a needle board, which is a specialized pressing tool used for pressing fabrics that have a nap, like corduroy. Let's talk about constructing your corduroy garment. When it comes to needles, a universal needle is going to work just fine. Just make sure to match the size of the needle to the weight of your fabric. 
generally a size 90 or 100 needle is going to work well for corduroy. Your biggest challenge when it comes to sewing corduroy is going to be its tendency to creep. What that means is that the two layers are going to kind of bristle against each other and try to creep around as you sew. That is all to say that corduroy is just a little bit shifty, but there are a few strategies that you can use to combat this. Strategy one is to always make sure that you are sewing in the direction of the nap. This is gonna help reduce your creeping quite a bit. Strategy two is to use lots and lots of pins or clips. This is gonna give you a lot more control. Strategy three is to hand base seams. This is really helpful when you are setting a sleeve or working on a curve because things can get really shifty at those points. And lastly, a walking foot can be really helpful. That's because with a walking foot, you have upper feed dogs as well as your lower feed dogs helping to feed everything through nice and evenly. Lastly, let's talk about finishing your corduroy project. Corduroy can tend to be really bulky, so you're gonna wanna choose a seam finish that's going to combat that as much as possible. Make sure that you're grading and trimming seam allowances wherever possible. And when it comes to the finishes themselves, my favorite are zigzag, overcast, flat felled, and surged. These tend to be the least bulky. I would definitely avoid using a seam finish like a French seam because that would be super bulky on something like corduroy. When it comes to hemming your corduroy project, you have a couple different options. You can do a simple top stitch hem. Top stitching looks really great on corduroy. Or you can do a hand sewn hem, which is also a great option because the nap tends to hide those hand stitches really nicely. I hope that you find these tips and tricks super helpful for your next corduroy project. We are doing a couple of these fabric guides, so make sure to let me know in the comments below which ones you wanna see in the future. I'll see you next time and happy sewing.